Our next speaker is uh, Dima Zaharov, uh, from, uh, who is a student uh, at the Higher School of Economics and also a researcher at our lab, the MIP team. And uh, he'll talk about uh, his recent progress on Erdős Gidnot Progressive uh, problem okay. and connections to convex geometry. Yeah, right. Okay, uh, so uh, the, the problem of Anders Ginsburg conceive is as follows. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot write anything, so I should uh, speak. Okay, suppose you have a set of points in uh, in a vector space Fp to power d, the dimensional space of a finite field. And uh, you want to find uh, p elements from this set such that their sum is zero. And you are looking for the minimal number s such that uh, every set of size s has such a subset of size p. Okay. Uh, the original uh, theorem of Erdős Ginsburg Kandiv is uh solves the case then our space is one dimensional so we work just with uh with residues modulo p and this theorem states that if you have uh, 2p minus 1 elements then you can find p elements for some is zero modulo p and uh in this case uh this number 2p minus 1 is tight as you can see from this example, uh, you can take uh, p minus one zeros and uh, p minus one ones. Uh, note that I do not uh, restrict myself to the sets with distinct elements. I allow take to take zero more than ones. And uh, in this example, uh, if they add any p of these elements, it will be some non-zero uh, residue. And so this is indeed a lower bound for our function. Uh, uh, let me mention that uh, this problem has a geometric interpretation, uh, very obvious. Uh, you might look at this problem as false. You, uh, take uh, some points in ZD, just integer lattice, and you want to find some n points among these such that their center of mass is also an integer point. So just the sum of these points divided by their number is also integer. This can be easily seen to be equivalent to this problem. And also, uh, you may not restrict yourself to the case of P prime. You may also work with uh, Zn to the D and ask the same question. And But uh, this more general problem can be quite easily reduced to the prime case just uh, by induction on the prime decomposition of your number. Okay. Oh, unfortunately, here is an error, not error, it's a typo. <laughs> uh, it's a result from 1961. Uh, the general question, I think, was posed in like 70s. And uh, the second case, namely two-dimensional one, was solve it quite recently, at least an out century, by Reiche. And he proved that if you consider points on the plane, then you need only for p minus three points to find p from those which sum, those sum is zero, mod p. And uh, this bound is also tight, as you can consider uh, the vertices of a square and take each vertex with multiplicity p minus one. 
And you can quite easily see that uh, the sum of any p points from this set is never equal to zero modu modulo p. So uh, let us imagine the square here. Uh, suppose it's drawn with white brush. And uh, if you take uh, p elements from vertices of this square, then uh, we may consider uh, projections of this set onto x axis and on y axis. And at each of these axes, we will see exactly the construction we considered above. So it will be a set of p points. Each of them is 0, 1. And by the previous argument, we know that uh, all points should be 0 or all points should be 1 in each projection. And this implies that in the original plane, this should have been uh, just one point, just one vertex of the square. But in one vertex, we have only p minus one uh, points taken, so this is impossible. Okay. Uh, now I go to the general case. Uh, we will be will be interested in the case then uh, the dimension of our space is fixed, it's a constant, and p is a large prime number. Uh, as we saw in these examples, uh, the uh, answer to these problems in dimension one and two is linear function in p. And it turns out to be the case in general. Uh, we, of course, have a trivial lower bound. Uh, S of if pd is at least 2 to the d times p minus 1 plus 1. This is exactly uh, the example of the hypercube. You take the vertices of a cube and take each with multiplicity p minus 1. And as previously, you check that uh, this set does not contain p elements for some zero modulo p. And this proves is lower bound. Okay. Uh, in 95, Alon and Dumbener proved that uh, this function is uh, indeed linear in p. They proved that S of fpd is at most some constant depending of d times p. And this constant, uh, they obtain it uh, C, D, log D, to D. Uh, it's just quite large, but not terribly large. Okay. And just for example, uh, if we plug in D equals three, then the bounds which falls from the paper is uh, 10,000 times P. And the lower bound is actually 9P minus one plus one. I will pr pr prove this lower bound later. Okay. Uh, and uh, my, my result is that I improve this uh, constant CD. Uh, I replace this expression by just uh, 4 to the D, but I should take P sufficiently, sufficiently large for this, to, for this bound to hold. And even more in the three dimensional case, I can even find an asympt asymptotic value of this. Okay. Uh, uh, Jimmy, just, just a short uh, question. So, yeah. when you write the d equals three case, do you mean that for sufficiently large p, you have an upper bound of nine p, or you mean that asympto it's nine plus little of one p? And thus, for it tends to nine p kind of as p grows. Uh, in my result, you mean in, in this D result? Three, yeah. I, I, here, I mean asymptotic. So you need you will have some error uh, factor yeah, even for large yeah. p. Okay. Yeah, little of p. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, now I want to speak a, a little bit about uh, lower bounds in this problem. In particular, I will show you why. Uh, you see here nine instead of eight, as you 
might conjecture at the first glance. So you see this cube, why should it be not optimal? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so uh, how do we construct, uh, const how do we prove lower bounds in this problem? We should provide a set of uh, some points in our space so that something holds. And in example of the cube, they just took some finite set and took each point from the set with multiplicity p minus one. So let's try to generalize this idea. So I introduce the weak uh, Edward Ginsburg Z constant. Uh, let W of FPD be the maximal size of a set in FPD such that if they take uh, every vertex of this set with multiplicity p minus one, then this uh, multiset will not contain p elements with zero sum. Okay, so uh, from this definition, we immediately see that uh, if we multiply this constant by p minus one, then get a lower bound for our initial problem. It's just tautology. And uh, from the example of a Boolean cube, they see that this constant is at least two to the d. Okay. Uh, now I will show that uh, for d equals three, we have that this constant is at least nine or p at least three in this case. And from this, you can obtain the general bound that this constant is at least nine to the d over three by just taking a Cartesian product of these constructions, which I will provide in the next slide. And uh, it can be easily seen that this problem is, in the, is uh, stable under taking Cartesian products. Okay, uh, so here's the construction. Uh, so on the left hand side, you see um, some polytop in three dimensional space. Uh, here on the right, I wrote down its vertices, uh, just for the sake of it. And uh, the construction will, will be the following, we just, consider the vertices of this polytop, uh, modulo p, and uh, take each vertex with multiplicity p minus one. Oh, wait, but for this bound, we just need to take it modulo p. Okay, and I claim that uh, if we do so, then uh, the obtained set will obey this property that the sum of p elements for this multiset does not contain uh, zero sum. Uh, okay, why is it so? Uh, uh, let me state the geometric property of this uh, polytop, which uh, provides us with this property. Uh, if you look at this polytop, the first thing you observe that uh, the interior of this polytop does not contain uh, the points from the lattice, from the integer lattice. Uh, uh, the red dot in the middle here is a point with coordinates zero, zero, one, and it is it lies on the boundary of our polytop. Okay, this is nice. Uh, moreover, if you consider any face of this polytop, then if you consider a face gamma, then if you consider a minimal lattice. Uh, spent by vertices of that phase. For example, you consider the phase, this uh, parallelogram in the back of this polytop. Then the lattice will be uh, a, a huge lattice with this uh, rectangle as a fundamental domain. Then uh, the property of this lattice is that it does not intersect with the interior of the corresponding phase. And 
you can easily check this for this particular polytope. Uh, the only non-trivial check will be for this uh, aforementioned phase. So the point here is that this point, uh, it, it belongs to the integer lattice of the whole space, but it does not belong to the uh, lattice spent by vertices of this particular phase. And this is the key thing. So uh, I claim that uh, if you have uh, in a more general situation, if you have uh, any polytope in QD and it's uh, it's hollow, uh, that which means the following: that if you consider any phase gamma of this polytope, then the intersection of uh, the minimal lattice spent by its vertices does not intersect interior of this vertex of this phase. So this is empty. And this geometric property implies that if I uh, consider my polytope, if I consider vertices of my polytope modulo p for sufficiently large pr primes, then it will provide me this uh, lower bound for this uh, number w of fpd. Okay, I uh, will skip the proof. It's not very difficult. Uh, uh, let me just mention why it is uh, the, why it is, sounds reasonable. Well, uh, what is uh, p elements of some zero? If you consider these elements as the vertices of this polytope, then uh, you can consider their uh, weighted sum. So, if you have some coefficients with which you take your vertices of polytope. And you consider a convex combination with these coefficients. So you take the sum over your set S and divide by P, then you will obtain an integer point of the lattice, of the uh, ambient lattice of this polytope. But by some uh, simple algebra, you can show that this point should actually be. Uh, should actually belong to this intersection of lambda gamma and the interior of gamma for some phase. And this uh, leads to a contradiction and completes the proof. The phase in particular would be uh, the span kind of of the points that you take in the combination. Yeah, 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 exactly. And this is such the, the whole polytope is also a phase. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so they saw that uh, this they saw this bound. Okay. Uh, now I claim that we can also find an upper bound, namely that W of FPD is at most four to the D. So this means that actually this simplified problem is actually simpler. We can solve it at least up to the constant in the base of exponent. Uh, this proof is not also not difficult. I only sketch it. Uh, you do the following. You consider a sum polynomial. Uh, it is written here. It encodes the property that if you take p elements from your set and their sum is zero modulo p if and only if all points you take are equal. So it is exactly the condition on the set S which we impose. So obviously, if you take all points equal, then their sum is zero. And uh, the value of this polynomial will be one. And otherwise, uh, if some points are different in this expression, then uh, the value of polynomial will be zero. So somehow this polynomial will be equal to the delta function of on our set. And from this, by some uh, standard algebraic uh, arguments, you can conclude that the size of the original set cannot be too large, basically by considerations of ranks of these polynomials. From the, on the one hand side, the rank of this polynomial is not too large. On the other hand side is the rank is at least S. 
and this is the proof. Okay, uh, so we were talking about uh, this weak aggregate positive constant. Now I want to say something about the uh, uh, strong aggregate positive constant, namely the original one. I uh, want to sketch you uh, the following par partial case of it. Suppose that you consider not arbitrary sets of points in FPD, but those sets which lie in the uh, small box of the bounded side length. So our multiset S will, will be contained in the K to the D for some large fixed constant K. And then in, in this case, I claim that we can uh, obtain the bound for to the D times P. Uh, namely that if the set has cardinality, lar cardinality larger than this, then we can find P elements of zero sum. Uh, okay, for this I uh, need to, re to recall some notions from convex geometry. Uh, suppose we have, uh, say, polytop some polytop in uh, d-dimensional space, then a point Q in this space is, is called theta central point of P if every half space containing the point Q contains also uh, at least theta fraction of uh, vertices of, of P. So at least theta times n vertices of P there, the n is the number of them. Okay, and uh, I think all of you know the classical uh, central point theorem that uh, which states that any set S in RD uh, has a one over D plus one central point. So for any finite set S, you can find a point Q such that each half space contain, containing this point Q contains at least a cardinality of S divided by D plus one points from S. Uh, uh, there is also an uh, integer ver version of this result uh, due to this uh, French mathematician, uh, which name I couldn't pronounce. Uh, probably Duanion. Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, which says that if your original set of points was in Z to the D, then you can find a central point which is also in Z to the D and which is two to the minus D central point of this set. And uh, not note that this result is sharp as the cube shows that if you have a cube, then it doesn't contain any other integer points aside from its vertices and the vertex uh, is clearly only two to the minus d central point. And cube turns out to be the worst case. Okay, and uh, to prove this uh, partial case of my result, I need a slight modification of this uh, theorem. Uh, let us say that if you have a polytop P, then uh, a point Q is an integer point of P if Q belongs to the intersection of lambda gamma, the interior of gamma for some phase gamma. It's this natural notion as we seen previously. And the result is that uh, if you have a polytop, then one can always find a photo minus D central integer point Q of this polytop. So if you just uh, apply the, this result about the ZD, ZD, this point, then the point Q from this theorem may not be integer point, this point, because it may land on some phase gamma and it may happen that it does not belong to lambda gamma. So this is the case with this polytope. It has nine vertices 
and it has a point, this red point, which is uh, one over eight central. It contains at least two points in which in each uh, half space, but this point is not integer. Okay, and in fact, uh, for d equals three, you can replace four to the minus d by one over nine in this case, and that polytop is optimal. Okay, and uh, how does this help to prove this result? Uh, basically, you do the following. Uh, you take your set S, you consider its convex hull, it's a sum polytop. Uh, you apply this theorem to this polytop, you obtain some uh, point Q. And from, for this point Q, they know that uh, it contains a lot of uh, points of S in each direction. And from this, you can deduce that this point could be obtained as a convex combination of points from our multiset S with uh, all uh, coefficient, coefficients of these convex combinations not too large, not exceeding the multiplicity of corresponding points in our multiset. And uh, so how much time do I have? Two minutes? Uh. Yes. But you can take uh, you can take extra five minutes. It's not a problem. So, okay, seven minutes at least. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this uh, claim covered some cases of our problem, but we didn't take care about all sets which are not contained in a box. So, let me briefly say how to deal with them. So say that they say that a K slab in FPD is just a set of points contained uh, in between two hyperplanes in this space. So you take a linear function psi and consider all points which uh, belong to the value of psi on which point on them uh, belongs to some interval a a plus k of some k. And the other case of our problem is then this multiset S is not contained in any such slab. Uh, that is to say, uh, S intersect with any slab H is at most one minus epsilon times the cardinality of our set. And this implies that if our set is not too small, then uh, we can also solve the problem. Uh, I will not talk about the proof of this fact. Uh, it goes to Alon and Dubene. So uh, note that this result alone implies that S of FPD is at most linear in P because you just uh, repeatedly apply this result. Uh, if you have a set, it is either not contained in any case lab in this sense, and you can find a zero sum sequence. Otherwise, is it is contained in some uh, slab, and then it the large portion of the set is contained in uh, some happy plane, and you uh, reduce your problem to the case to the space of smaller dimension and proceed by induction. That's basically how Alon and Dubiner proved their result. Okay, and a little bit about this uh, claim. It, it is proved by uh, considering some Cayley graph on FPD, which is const constructed by some, in some way from this multiset. And uh, the condition on this intersection implies that uh, this Cayley graph will have a small second eigenvalue, so it will have a large spectral gap, and you can use uh, expanding properties of this hypergraph to uh, to prove that every element of this space can be expressed as the sum of p distinct elements of x, and therefore zero is also expressible in this way, and we are done.
Okay. So, so far they have uh, two cases. Uh, in first case, our multiset is contained in a small box. In the second case, our set is, contain, is not contained in any case lab. And in both cases, we can find uh, a sequence of elements of S, where sum is zero, model P. And the general proof somehow interpolates between these two scenarios. It's, uh, but I don't have any time to speak about it. So uh, let me briefly mention also some open problems which remain. Um, okay. Uh, okay, my main result states that actually this constant S of FPD is asymptotically equal to the W of FPD, the weak Edwards Ginsburg leaf constant times P. Uh, we saw the lower bound previously, and the upper bound is also true, at least by uh, at least asymptotically. Uh, also, uh, we saw that W of FPD is bounded from below by L of D. There, L of D is the maximal number of vertices in a hollow polytope in QD. But a hollow polytope is a polytope such that which does not contain integer points. And uh, I ask, is it true that uh, this bound is actually tight, namely that W of FPD is equal to L of D for almost all primes P? I don't know this. Uh, also, open problem, uh, can we prove uh, some stability result about Edge Ginsburg leaf problem? Namely that, the, so that lower bound is obtained by taking some set and taking each uh, point with multiplicity P minus one. Is it true that all large uh, examples in this problem look like this, that I they close uh, to such constructions in some sense. I do not know this either. And uh, if we manage to prove a stability result, then we may hope to prove an exact result for large P. Namely that, for example, S of FP cubed is 9P minus one plus one for large P. I think it will be very interesting. Uh, and uh, uh, this result about the asymptotic holds only for P very large, like extremely large. And it is a uh, very interesting question of what happens in the case of small P. For example, if they fix P and uh, tend D to infinity, then they know much less about the behavior of these constants. Uh, these are the best known results. And the last one is obtained last year. So here you see that the bound is basically root P to the power D, not constant to the power D. And it's a large mystery what happens here. Uh and uh, yes, Andrei. yeah, I'll, uh, I'll say later just after you finish. Uh -huh. Okay, yes, and the last problem which I think very interesting is about this constant L of D. Uh, uh, we know that this constant is at most 4 to the D and at least 2.1 to the D basically, and we do not much know much more about it. And it's a very natural question, I think. And so also work exploration. So I think I'll stop here. Thank you for your listening. Thank you, Dima. Um, any questions? Oh, well, definitely I have a couple of questions. Uh, well, others are thinking. So, well, just small comment. So this uh, Sauerman's result, uh, I guess C depends on D maybe, or C? No, C, C, is, C is just like P to the P. Ah, P to the, 
Const uh, constant P. dependent on the on P. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Um, okay. Uh, so I wanted to ask about this um, center point theorem that you proved. So this yeah. four to the if four to the d result four to the minus d. So if you improve this, would you uh, would you improve the upper bound in your theorem? Um, morally, uh, well, you should prove this in a, a little bit more general setting. Mm -hmm. uh, if you improve the, con the bound on W of FPD, then you know, this could go. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this 4 to the minus D is not tight, right? Yeah, I but can improve it. I, I can write here like 1 over binomial coefficients. To d to choose d mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but if uh, polytop is a central symmetric can we put there to, to the minus d no no a uh, central symmetric about what uh, uh, so if you consider the minimal lattice containing the minimal lattice spent by its vertices then it uh, uh, then its center of symmetry will not be integer point. And uh, yeah, uh, in general, uh, if the polytop is centrally symmetric, uh, it doesn't give any benefit. Uh, like the bound will be just two times better or worse. No, it doesn't help. Okay, any uh, other questions, comments? Okay. So, so about uh, centrally symmetric uh, polytop a bit, you can just take this polytop, uh, take two copies of it in four dimensions and stick them together to obtain a centrally symmetric thing. So it's not restrictive. I mean, you can do the same operation with whatever you find. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if not, then let's thank Dima.